So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So finally, I have a Ford Mustang on my channel. So what I have here is the 2023 Ford Mustang 2.3 EcoBoost. Just chill guys, I know it's an EcoBoost. But earlier this year, I featured its competitor with a 4-cylinder engine too. So I'm like, why not I'll shoot for this too to see why I prefer this over the competition too. We don't get the 2024 model yet, aka the Dark Horse, but this is probably my favorite gen of Mustang. Just looks so... Dang sexy. I mean, it's a Mustang. It's one of the most iconic muscle cars in our roads today. You get really nice headlights over here. Your DRLs and turn indicators are just down here. The ground clearance is 137mm, which is actually on par on its class. I have seen a lot of this on our roads. This can go over big humps with these two. So as well, being a Ford Mustang, you get 19-inch wheels all around and 255-40 series tires. Yeah, they're huge. But if you notice from the shot, these are not on Brembo, so I think you can only get them in the Mustang GT V8. If not mistaken too, if it's not available there, you only can get the Brembo full package brakes on the Shelby GT500, which I've yet to do a tour on too. So on the side profile, very distinguishable, more of sports car like rather than that of a muscle car. So here on the hood, there's a lot of character lines here and there, and the vents up here are real. Of course, you need a lot of cooling for this car, the grill too, I love the Mustang badges here. So easy identifiable as a Mustang. So speaking of the hood, let's pop up the hood. So despite only two being a four-cylinder engine, yeah, as you can see in this shot, the 2.3 liter turbocharged engine still takes a lot of space here in the engine bay. So yet again, it's a 2.3 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine with 314 horsepower and 475 newton meters of torque. And as well, this one is mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission. Sadly, there are no manual variants for either the Mustang V8 and the EcoBoost. But in some markets like the US, of course, they are available. Actually, I want the Mustang EcoBoost convertible. Anyway, that's a story for another time. Again, being the four-cylinder, there's a lot of space in here. So to accommodate the V8 engine, the original engine. I wouldn't mind owning this too as a starter sports car because I've never owned a sports car in my life. I was always looking at this Mustang EcoBoost. Even my dad too. So that's about it here with the engine. Let's go to the rear. So here now at the rear and the rear quarter of this Mustang. Yeah, very much slappable. It's so sexy. And as well, you get LED brake lights here. I love the little dances when you unlock and unlock the car. There are parking sensors all around. So for this generation of Mustang, you can tell the differences between the EcoBoost and the GTV8 from the exhaust pipes itself. So there are only two for this EcoBoost and they're quad exhaust for the GTV8. And you have a very big Mustang badge here along with a reverse camera. This entire part for the boot is gloss black too. And I love the ducktail-ish design here on the boot too. So good. Yet again, my AK still stands that this is more like a sports car rather than a muscle car. So as well here, I have the key. Open the boot up. Press this twice. So despite being a sports car slash muscle car, the boot is still pretty generous. So you have a total of 408 liters here. Not much toys here. You get a... Oh, there's not even a spare tie underneath here, but you get a subwoofer here on the right side. And like its competition, if you want to further increase the boot space, you can fold down the rear seats, which is cool. But unlike the competitor, the length of the hood from top to bottom is a little bit narrower than that of the aforementioned competitor. So that's about it too with the rear and the boot of this Mustang EcoBoost. Let's check out the interior. So this is the interior of the Ford Mustang EcoBoost, which you all there. So immediately going in the car is hilariously not that difficult for me, but it might be difficult for some because you sit really, really low in this Mustang. So as well on the door, it's really long. The opening is really wide. I mean, I can't even reach it from my normal driving position. You get your window switches there, unlock and unlock buttons and cubby spaces even my small water jug won't even fit in there when they go up since this is being a two-door coupe 
or coupe if you're from the US so here on the left side you have your air conditioning vent and just literally right down below it you have your light adjustments here like almost every other Ford today except for the new territory shameless plug I have a full review of that think of that will be the description down below as well I found something really fancy with this Mustang you have a tailgate button over here and then you have a pop out storage space I mean it is really long but money tickets and coins will be perfect in there so as well you get your instrument cluster that's such a cool design so very similar to like with the GT V8 variant and I'm not sure because I'm, I'm not allowed to start this car if this has line lock like with the GT V8 so here in the center you get your air conditioning vents and I love your aluminum trim that stretches all day from the left to the right side of the passenger and I love there's a Mustang emblem on the passenger side itself so from the picture I showed you earlier if you get the Mustang EcoBoost convertible heritage edition something there's more plaques there you can put it's actually a nice thing you can even modify it to your own taste if you plan to buy one of these so in your infotainment system you have Apple CarPlay Android Auto but this looks like the older version of Ford Sync system I think the Sync 3 system because it looks very similar to the older Rangers like what the one I reviewed here too the Ranger FX4 so further down below you have a, a lot of buttons so I'll just put it all on screen here so but the most important one I'll talk about are the ones down here below you have your engine start stop button your hazard button oh it's a flick that sounds cool so you have electronic stability control steering modes I think and then your drive modes here so if I ever have a chance to drive this car I'll demo all of this properly soon so for the down below you have a very small cabin space but at least you have a USB port and a 12 volt socket here in the gear lever, again, nice aluminum trims here too. And there's a sink engraving embossment just in front. And there's no plus minus here on the gear lever itself because you have paddle shifters. They're plastic, but at least there is. So here in the steering wheel itself, I love this Mustang steering wheel in general. Better than all of its muscle car competitors. I'm already saying that. So here on the left side, you have your cruise control functions, volume adjustment. And on the right side, you have your adjustments for the instrument cluster, voice command buttons, and phone connectivity buttons here. If you notice, there's, I think, a dedicated Mustang button just above the music button itself. There's a lot of buttons there. Anyway, your halogen lights with a passenger airbag. Never seen that layout before since it's up here. Sun visor, vanity mirror with halogen lights. And then... If you know, you know. Perfect. So I wonder if this extend to in the Mustang convertible. We'll find out again soon. So here you have two cup holders, fit my 18 water jug, and a manual handbrake. Surprisingly, this is one of the few Fords I know that still has a manual handbrake, including that Ranger XLS. So here, center console box. How do you open it? Ah, uh, here from the side. Uh, okay, pretty decent. Probably a cooling feature for the console box and a USB port with a LED-ish light and then glove box, I have the key, I can open it okay, pretty decent for a sports car the seats here pretty excellent for a sports car slash muscle car I mean look at that, very very good as well the quality of this is excellent but of course it's wrapped in plastic so yeah I forgot this is a four seater so space there in the back, I mean I fit there my headroom just about fit, my head's literally scraping the we're in skin already but if I just slouch them just ever so slightly I'm fine there but I will say the rear seats are better than that of the competitor I featured on my channel too so that's about here in the interior too of this Mustang EcoBoost so the cost for all of this is 3,048,000 pesos yes there's been a price increase recently from 2.6 2.7 million pesos but is it still worth it I would say yes because not gonna lie me and my friend actually still want one of these. I mean, I know I'm so biased with the V8 because of this. Of course, I've never owned a sports car yet in my life, but I've driven some, but it's a little bit of a different experience if you fully own one of these and have it for your entire life. I wouldn't mind starting with this Mustang EcoBoost, so shout out to JR. As well, before we go, I just saw the brand of the speakers, Bausch & Wilkins. Why don't we have that on the Ford Rangers? Just saying. Hopefully in the Raptor too. <laughs> Hopefully we can get those on the Ranger Raptor. So that concludes my walk around review of this Ford Mustang EcoBoost. I'd like to thank everyone here at Makati Ford on their summer theme today. And to Michelle, her contact details are right here. If you want to buy 
this Ford Mustang or any other Ford here at Makati Ford, you may contact her and the following S is in the description down below. So, hope you guys like and subscribe and I will see you hopefully with the other competitor that I never toured on my channel yet. So, stay tuned with that. Bye-bye. And hopefully I can drive this and the V8 and the Shelby GT500. Alright, bye-bye, bye-bye.